that. So currently, I'm on the Pacific Spirit Regional Park Forest Discovery Trail. Mm, give me a few minutes to go and check out the sign and read it. You know, the most fresh air to tune in is sympathy sounds and pure through curtains of brilliant green to discover the diversity of life next door to the city. The Pacific Spirit Forest Discovery Trail is 1.5 kilometers long, it's about a mile long, and most visitors can easily complete the loop in less than an hour. This trail is suitable for all ages and abilities, and no grades exceed 5%. Follow the Pacific Spirit Forest Discovery Trail through the many habitats of this mixed second growth forest. Interpretive stops reveal connections between different parts and life stages of the forest and the creatures who call this forest home. And there's a little caution in the lower right corner of the sign that says, Please help us protect this park. Stay on trails and leave berries, mushrooms, and other plants for the insects, birds, and mammals. This project is assisted by BC Hydro. Forest Renewal BC. Okay. So, I'm going to keep this video in the portrait mode because if I turn it the other way around, it's going to really muck up things, but I think holding it this way might come out, um, in the longitudinal way, um, not landscape mode. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's get back to the trail. This is the trail. As you can tell, nice tall conifer. I guess that looked like uh, cypress, judging by the leaves. See the way this is like that? That's cypress. Because there's two different versions of this. There's this granny one like this, and then there's a shorter shrubbery one. So it's probably, um, no, correction, it's probably a cedar. There you see some moss on trees. That moss gets to be really dense in some areas of forest growth in the Pacific Northwest. Seeing as this is um, Pacific Rainforest Country. Temperate Rainforest. Um, the reason why it's a rain, called a rainforest is because in areas where there's lots of high precipitation, that's lots of heavy rain, um, the flora tend to um, get necessary nourishment from the excess amounts of rain. Anyway, this is a trail. This is a deciduous tree. Probably it's an acorn or um, elder, I'm not quite sure. Won't know until um, later on in spring and early summer. Who knows, maybe I might do a second part to this video. So this video is not a rant, um, I'm just going to clear up things, people might have noticed in the previous video about, um, what was it, uh, the, the self immolation fake self immolation project, there are some interesting, very interesting, uh, videos on YouTube, where, um, a guy is using, um, I think it's red fluid that, that uses this a special type of solvent that burns at a lower temperature than um, gasoline. You use that on cotton material and you try not to have any nylon on because that melts and really burns like crazy. It sticks to your flesh. So I would mentioned that and I'd like to apologize to the um, new left and all that for trying to say that for more high prof what I was trying to explain in that previous video was that you could create a more high profile and attention by getting somebody to do a fake self immolation the guy will walk away from it later but he can go through all the acting all he has to do is be properly protected because in order to get a full body immolation you basically have to um, have cotton overalls on and have a thermal layer in between that's cotton just, just in case the um, outerwear um, gets too hot. And then you do it that way. Because all the guy has to do is just go around there and scream like a big banshee and then plop down and have people put, put um, fire blankets on him. It's cool shit. Anyways, back to the, the little walk through, the, through this park. 
as you can tell, this is a long video because I want to go and do the maximum until it peters out. Um, I've got 10 gigabytes and I'm already at 128 megabyte um, level now, so it should be long. Oh, here's nice little interesting stuff in the forest. Now, I wish I could get this thing to go and do a focus. Oh, it does. Check that out. That's pretty cool. That's just like a little pathway there for, I guess, the homeless people. Anyways, getting back to the trail itself. I walked by, pa past a sign there. Sorry about the finger. I don't think I'll edit that out. Um, I didn't catch a nose to fit. Maybe I'll be able to see it on the way out here. But back there a little bit, when you heard some background noise, it sounded like Pierce was talking. There, there was a couple mothers there. Them waiting in the Capri carriages and talking amongst themselves. I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, I'm pretty unprepared for most of these things. If I were to go and actually do a forest walk here, I'd probably do it like early morning in summertime when there's very little people around. I might get surprised by a vagrant. Oh, check this out. If you go down that path, that's a long path, it's probably like about one click. Anyways, let's go look at the sign here. The two branches there that were donated, for example, in donations, they spend maybe about 150 bucks, something like that. And this guy, basically, the family, for the Woodhouses, uh, their parents are dedicated to this, basically, this bench for them. 150 bucks, maybe more. I don't know how much. And here, of course, is for um, Sipo Lok, who is a father for, um, you know, it's really nice. Could it be the spirit among trees that fills my mind with joy and wonder? So beautiful. Anyways, we got here tree helpers. It says here on the Discovery Forest Trail that the giant green giants, the forest rainforest, are western red cedar, like that cedar tree I show you the leaves of. And then there's the Douglas fir, which has the pine needles, and then there's western hemlock, which is sort of like in between. I think it's more like a cedar. Depend on their shallow spreading roots to pull water and nutrients from the acidic soil. Now, it's asking me to find their helpers. The helpers would probably be things like mushrooms and, uh, uh, I think it's just mushrooms. Look for the mushrooms growing on the ground around Douglas fir and western hemlock trees. Some types of mushrooms collect nutrients from the soil for the tree and in return receive sugars from the tree's roots. Mushrooms are a favorite food of voles, slugs, and squirrels. Let's see, a garden tip, plant native trees in the right soil water and light conditions and remember that they do go, grow very, very tall. Be sure they are a safe distance from power lines. So uh, they're just pointing out how, how to recognize trees. You got a red cedar and the cedars have, need moist to wet partial shade. They'll grow up to 60 meters so they can be in partial shade. Um, also hemlock too, moist soil and shade up to 60 meters. That's because of the fact that they're Probably their leaves are a bit more sensitive, whereas Douglas fir can be the one that basically is covering, um, just shading the, the other two trees. They work, in, they work together. Anyways, here's a gigantic um, clade of ferns here. A clade is sort of like a family, but you don't use family when you're talking about a bunch of um, plants that are about the same in the same area. You call them clades. What else is here? Oh, look, see, this is it. This is this. Uh, either it's red cedar or it's hemlock. I think the um the deciduous trees you see here, the tall ones, probably might be elder. Anyways, I think I've talked your ear off for at least my nine minutes here. Hey, who cares? It's, it's my video. What else? Um, seeing as I'm not like one of those guys that actually study up on a forest to like go and identify everything before you. That's kind of like putting up really much, too much information in your mind. But some people can do it. Oh look, more mass. I'm on a small little shrub. Those are shrubs, I don't know what kind they are, but they probably come out with like leaves and that. It's a deciduous one because all the leaves are off. Probably something with very pretty flowers in it. Maybe, maybe not. What else? 
Okay, we're at the 10 minute mark. Yeah, it looks like me, I'm counting down the minutes here. I want to do at least a 15 minute video. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's probably what's going to take to the end. Look way down there, and I'm going to do a close up here as we walk around. You can see that there is an exit somewhere out there. I want to get to focus on that. Well, we're not going to focus on it because it's all gone blurry. So we're going to go back down to your regular focus so you can get it. Yeah, it looks like that's the exit up there. You can just make up a hint, a blur, right in the middle of the picture path down there. Uh, and to our left is the golf course. The golf course is, um, the UBC golf course is for the upper crust society who love to spend their um, spare moments to golfing. I guess it's a form of meditation for people f from Western Europe, ancestry. Because, of course, golf was invented by Scotsmen. Yeah, and Scotch are known very much for their sense of um, humor. For example, they invented the bagpipes. So you basically invented a device that squalls like a really um, messed up cat. And you do it for fun. And for, and for scaring the enemies. Like when, they, when, when a bunch of Scotsmen in their kilts would take all the, all the, the little um, musical instruments out there before a war was shot. Start. I go out there and start squalling the older instruments to play the instruments like crazy. And it would drive the um, Englishmen mad because they'd go, What's that? What's that? Big monster's coming. Oh no! And next you know, you see a bunch of um, Scots uh, running towards them with big, huge broadswords. They'd be running away. Oh my god! We're being invaded! No, actually, they were in Actually, the English were notorious for invading other lands because the majority ancestors of Englishmen were Anglo-Saxons and Jutes. Well, the Jutes died out, but the Anglo-Saxons stayed. And next thing that happened, it's so interesting, you had a Germanic language that was forced upon um, Celtic people, Brythonic mainly, and, and Gaelic. Well, the, the, way, the Irish Gaelic type of thing. And the Scots is Irish, Irish type of Gaelic thing too. So I had both forms of, of Celts there they were forced to speak English, which is an invader's language in England. Of course, when you tell the English that, they get all upset because they think, oh, are you being down on English people? That's prejudice. Well, actually it's not, because um, English itself is originally a Germanic, Germanic language. Um, the closest in the olden days was Old Frisian, because most of the Anglo-Saxons hung out there. Because it's easy to go there and do their piracy type of reading thing. Yeah, they learn a lot of good habits from their um, sometimes enemies and sometimes co invaders, the Vikings. Oh, look, we're going to from the golf course. And as you can tell from behind me, not a living soul coming down here because they think oh, it's going to rain. What's the point of going, be going down there? Anyways, I'm walking towards <laughs> part of. Me. I think it's the main, the main university boulevard from Blanca. I can tell because um, if you can see any part of the golf course on the southern side of this um, boulevard up there, you're sure to be on the main drag that goes for the trolley buses. Because there's like two different bus loops in UBC. You have the regular, usual, old um, trolley bus exchange, which it services since they start bringing in um, the 14 and the 4 and I think there's one other bus. And then they open up the, the loop 7, well, stop 7 on the, on the other loop, which is the, what they call the main uh, UBC bus loop, which is by McKinnis Field, near the sub building, and the rec center. Anyways, I've talked your ear off for all 15 minutes. Coming up, we're getting to about 333 um, megabytes. And at that point, when it gets to 15 minutes, I'll be shutting this thing off and I'm um, shutting it up. Because I'll probably talk, like I said, I'll talk to you off for 15 minutes. Ooh, imagine that. Look at this old growth tree. This tree is so old it's dead. The, the moss is still growing. It's eating up that tree alive. Anyways, got 12 seconds and it looks to me like I'm cut off from the main drag because of a stupid fence. Hopefully there's a gate there somewhere. 
which is really embarrassing.